There is a sort of reluctance that accompanies any activity that compels an obsessive compulsive like myself to surrender a measure of control, blindly trusting someone else's taste, their sensibilities, their judgment, whatever it may be. Today, I found myself standing amidst the bibliographic kingdom that is the Chamblin book mine, doing just that. My friend Kevin of Kevin Toll Reads had tagged me to participate in the bookstore challenge. The premise requires you to stroll into your most trusted used bookstore, approach the cash register with all the faux confidence you can muster, and surrender $20 to the staff, telling them to pick out whatever books they think you will love. The two faces behind the counter today were Ashley and Carly. I told them that I was there as a sort of sacrificial lamb of literary exploration, and I made known my preferences for sci-fi and some fantasy, classic literature, and a recent and tentative fascination with horror. Carly, it appears, has a penchant for horror, and Ashley was armed with a curatorial instinct that leaned toward fantasy. I cannot shout these two out enough for their enthusiastic eagerness to take on this challenge. Huge, huge thanks to Ashley and Carly for making this happen. They assembled for me a formidable stack of paperbacks to choose from. And here is what I walked away with. Shadow Magic by Patricia C. Reed. Ashley picked this one out and handed it to me excitedly. Published in 1982, this one is a high fantasy adventure novel that centers around a princess fighting a fearsome enemy in a magical forest. It was Reed's first novel, and I'd never heard of her before, but she is apparently friends with Lois McMaster Bujold, whose work I am at least a little bit familiar with. And I absolutely love this book's cover. Something about it stirred a certain nostalgia in me. Some sort of reminder of the stories that first lured me into fantasy as a kid. I'm excited to try this one out. Intensity by Dean Koontz. Carly selected this one, stating the title is practically a spoiler for what the book has in store. Published in 1995, it was apparently Kuntz's take on psychological horror before the genre became replete with its current tropes. The cover has an almost foreboding simplicity, and it seems like a perfect invitation to try some Kuntz for the first time. Metalon by Jennifer Fallon, yet another title and author I'd never heard of before Ashley placed it in the stack. This one was published in 2000, and it's the first book in Fallon's Hythroon Chronicles, which is a series that is apparently brimming with swords and sorcery and political maneuvering and the clashing of divine forces, and not to mention dragons. I mean, who doesn't enjoy a good dragon, am I right? The Mummy, or Ramsey's The Damned, by Anne Rice. Another selection from Carly who pitched it as the perfect place to start with Anne Rice. I've always been curious about Anne Rice, not least because there's a website where you can paste a snippet of your own writing and it will tell you what famous authors you write like. And I've been told by this website that I write like Anne Rice. (laughs) So that's got me intrigued, to say the least. This 1989 novel is apparently a tale of cursed immortality and marked a shift in Rice's style from Southern Gothic to a more historical bent. Since I'd been meaning to dip into her work for quite some time, this selection felt fated. Stormfront by Jim Butcher. 
the debut novel of the Dresden Files, which catapulted Jim Butcher to the ranks of urban fantasy royalty. This one was published in 2000 and mixes detective noir with supernatural elements in a modern-day Chicago. I've had my eye on the Dresden Files for years, but just never pulled the trigger. So when Ashley put this one in the stack, I knew it was time to finally give it a shot. What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Carly's enthusiasm spiked when she handed this one over. T. Kingfisher is apparently known for mixing horror with a sharp wit and intricate storytelling. And this 2022 novel is a modern reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. It's been labeled cozy horror, which seems oxymoronic to me, but we're going to find out what that's all about. I've seen a lot of hype around this author, so I'm very excited for this one. And finally, Monkey, Folk Novel of China by Wu Chiang Yin, translated by Arthur Whaley. In many ways, this one is perhaps the most intriguing to me of all the selections. Originally written during the Ming Dynasty, it's a classic of Chinese literature and one of the four great classical novels. This one was chosen by Ashley, and it's one that I'd shamefully somehow never heard of before. The novel apparently centers on the monkey king, Sun Wukong, and it's revered for the way it mixes mythology and adventure and philosophy. Ashley also said that there's a good deal of humor in it, too. I'm pretty thrilled with this selection and anxious to expand my reading horizons a bit eastward. And that's it. Seven books in total, though the stack was nearly three times that size at first. I paid about $30. Yes, I'd gone over budget a little bit, and no, I'm not even a little sorry. Thanks once again to Ashley and Carly, faces I've seen countless times in the book mine, but who now have names to go along with those faces. I am ridiculously grateful to both of you for your expertise and your enthusiastic participation in this endeavor. I'd also like to thank my friend Kevin once again for tagging me. What great fun this tag was, even if it was just a little bit anxiety inducing. The Bookstore Challenge, as it turns out, wasn't just about finding some new books. It was about the act of trusting others to curate fragments of your life story sight unseen. And ultimately, what could be more exciting than discovering that maybe they got it just right? We'll see. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hey, I almost forgot to tag someone. Uh, bucket. Bucket of books. Tag your it. I would love to see what your favorite used bookstore has in store for you. So, cheers, mate.